Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Kumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook 104. When last we listened in, the party had received information about some notorious grey cloaks headed to a monastery for nefarious purposes. The group had a crisis of conflicting opinions, but in the end agreed that they had all dealt with these grey cloaks enough that the bullies needed to be put in their place. As the group arrived at the archives of Steinhauser, they observed that the rogue knights were killing unarmed citizens and attempting to burn down the building. They sped down the hill, and each went in different directions to attack the various aggressors. We rejoin them now with Lady Irena and Fargus, the ranger, closing in on a pair of miscreants that have just lassoed a pair of monks. The mage and ranger quickly closed the gap and came up behind a pair of rogue knights that had just captured a pair of monks. Lady Irena was mumbling in arcane words, and Fargus positioned himself to leap from the saddle. As the pair approached, one of the knights heard the hoof prints and turned. The man let go of his rope and quickly turned his horse to face off with the elven woman. Raising his crossbow, Lady Irena finished her spell, and a blue cloud appeared over the man's head as his horse lurched forward. The sleep spell overcame the man, who quickly launched a bolt into the ground as he fell into the ground, sound asleep in slumber. His partner in crime noticed the movement and turned in the opposite direction from where Fargus was approaching. The Grey Cloak also dropped his rope and began to unsheathe his blade as the human ranger tackled him from the side. A large frame of Fargus dealt a substantial blow to the knight and sent him straight down into the ground. The ranger quickly rolled off and drew his blade but noticed that the opponent had not moved. Grabbing the knight by the shoulder, Fargus flipped him over and quickly realized that the man had smashed his face into a rock and it had caved in his skull. Lady Arena quickly dismounted and began to bind the sleeping knight's hands and feet while Fargus helped the monks get out of the lassos. As the pious men gratefully thanked the large warrior, one of them pointed towards the building and exclaimed that his friend was in trouble. Cabe spurred his mount at the dangerous speed but covered the expanse quickly just as one of the Grey Cloaks had lit a torch and was headed to the corner of the building where a large haystack was present. Yelling at the man to stop, Cabe somersaulted from his horse and crashed into the man. The torch was knocked from his hand and rolled onto the ground towards the straw. As the bard and knight both rose to their feet, each drew weapons and weapon strikes clanged together. Each man dodged, parried, and thrust as their opponent did what uh, the other had done. The battle seemed like it raged for an eternity, but it had only been several moments, and each had sustained minor injuries. But as the haystack caught on fire, both men quickly became distracted. The fire began to inch closer to the knight as he lunged forward to avoid being burnt, but instead accidentally skewered himself on both of Cabe's short swords. Falling to the ground with a mortal wound, the half-elf leaped over him, took up his cloak and began to swat at the flames as they moved higher towards the building and the thatched roof. At the left side of the open field, one of the monks alerted Fargus to the problem with the building. The large ranger watched as Cabe's opponent fell and he tended to putting out the fire. With the monks rescued and safe, Fargus started towards the building when he noticed another grey cloak exiting the building and coming up behind Cabe, who was unaware of the issue. Fargus grabbed his horse and fumbled at the saddle. Moments later, Cabe had extinguished the flames and turned around, only discovered a large knight falling on top of him. Knocked into the hot embers, the half-elf struggled to get out from underneath the heavily armored man and noticed that he had two crossbow bolts sticking out of his back. Holy lady, you best get your ass over here, yelled Bolger, the former sailor. He was engaged in a gray cloak with a scarred face and was quite angry and swinging his sword at the squat gnome who skillfully dodged the sweeping strikes. The cleric began to run over, but the gray cloak landed a blow, slicing open Bolger's shoulder. 
The gnome kicked up his leg as a reaction and struck the man under the armor and in the groin, causing him to howl in pain. The yelling was short-lived, however, as Sister Elaine smashed him in the face with a mace given to her by Investigator Rockfist. A loud thunderclap was heard and a bolt of lightning came out of the clear blue sky and blasted the evil knight, causing his body to explode. His innards splashed out, coating the shocked pair as they both gazed at the mace. Back at the front of the building, Fargus pulled the dead knight off his associate who jumped up. The embers had started small fires to Cave's clothing and cloak, but were quickly extinguished. Lady Irena ran up, noticed the damage, and cast a quick spell of mending, fixing the wardrobe malfunction. Sounds of screaming were heard from inside the monastery, and the threesome prepared to enter. Peering into the dimly lit building, several bodies of dead monks were spotted. A bleeding bulger and dirty Sister Elaine ran up to the front as well. Fargus looked at the gore-covered cleric and smugly pointed out, Your talking didn't work, huh? Another scream of a man being tortured was heard from within and everybody plunged into the compound. The interior of the building was in shambles and several deceased monks were discovered with slashing damage to their torsos and face. Bludgeoning damage was also present on their fists from fists of the knights. Another scream guided the group to the chapel at the back. The doors were already open as they ran into the building. A monk whose robes were cut open was being held down by a pair of knights, while a third, large warrior, held a red-hot poker. The man snarled, What do we have here? And jabbed the poker through the monk's chest, killing him as the smell of burnt flesh engulfed the chamber. Boys, looks like we got some replacement fun. And two of them are ladies. The leader moved into the front of the altar where the dead monk was still draining blood onto the floor. Magical words escaped Lady Arena's mouth, and moments later, the three men were caught up in thick, sinewy strands of webbing. The lead male was only partially entangled and yanked his beefy arm free, while his two associates were not as fortunate. Flicking the tattered webs from his armor, the man advanced while drawing a menacing-looking weapon. Who's first? inquired the gray cloak. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.